Hey, Trish. Hey, Diane. How's it going? I'm okay. Well, there's this one thing that has been getting under my skin. Is it one of your clients? I keep telling you, Diane, you've got too many clients on your books. How many people are you a therapist for again? 20. 20? I'm sorry, but that's just too many people. It's such an emotionally draining job. Tell me about it. But it's not my clients that are the problem, surprisingly. No? Well, they take up a lot of my time, but you know how much I love my job, how much I love helping people. I know, Diane. You truly are one of the kindest people I know. But my point is that you give too much. You need to take some time for yourself. I know how hard you work because I used to be one of your clients. We broke therapist-patient confidentiality rules there, didn't we? We sure did. Is Jim okay? He's been away on business a lot lately. Is he still being distant? Jim's always been distant. He just gets further away from me every day. Soon I won't be able to see him even if he's in the same room as me. Why is he such a closed book? If I knew, then the book wouldn't be so closed, would it? Fair enough. So, what is getting under your skin then? Look at me, being the therapist now. How the tables have turned. <laughs> well, I've actually been getting these weird texts from an unknown number. Weird texts? Unknown number? Yeah. What do they say? Well, the first one was kind of cryptic. It just said, Hey, Diane, I know something you don't know. That doesn't sound very cryptic to me. Sounds pretty straightforward and to the point. Yeah, I suppose so. I guess it just confused me. Why? Mostly because I have no idea who it came from. Oh, yes, of course. But anyway, I replied, naturally asking who the hell this was texting me. I thought it might be Jim playing one of his weird pranks. It probably is, to be fair. Well, that's what I thought until... Yeah? Until what? They sent me a photo. What was in the photo? It was a photo of lingerie next to some feet. The feet definitely belonged to a woman. So definitely not Jim then. Well, I hope not. I screen grabbed the text message with the photograph and sent it to Jim. He had no idea what was going on. He said that most likely they had the wrong number, but I reminded him that the original message explicitly mentioned my name. One of your clients, maybe? I have all their numbers. Come on, Diane, this is the 21st century. People can have two phones these days. I know, but I don't think any of my clients would play around like this. Did you get any more messages after that? Yeah. And this is when things started turning really weird. I got a message saying, I know what you did. That's so creepy. What did you do? I don't know. I asked the same question. But then they just texted me this name I hadn't heard in years. What name? Do you remember Josh Vandecourt? That client of yours that went missing? Yeah. I was recovering from my operation and couldn't see him, and then he disappeared. I thought you weren't seeing him anymore because he had said he had been violent towards his wife. Well, that was the real reason, but I used my operation as an excuse. I couldn't help Josh anymore, but I felt bad about it. So do you think Josh is the person that is texting you? From where? Hiding? It seems plausible. Maybe a little far-fetched, but plausible. I mean, maybe, but the cops were searching for him for months. They couldn't find a trace of him. Do you think maybe you should contact them? Who? The police? It was more than five years ago. I don't think they would look into it. But maybe they could find out who the number belongs to. I really don't think they would bat an eyelid. People receive strange messages from strange numbers all the time. Well, anyway, I've ignored whoever it is. I've blocked the number. You've blocked the number? Yeah, shouldn't I? Well, if it is Josh trying to reach out, after all these years, don't you think you should find out who it is? If it's actually him? But the texts seem kind of threatening, no? Yeah, but Josh was kind of threatening. And if it isn't him, then whoever it is must know something about him. I think you should unblock the number and find out some more. Like actually reach out to this psychopath? Yeah, text them and find out a bit more about them. If it is Josh, then it will become pretty obvious soon enough. Yeah, Josh was a character. Trust me, Diane, do it. If it turns out this person is just a random creep, then go ahead and block the number. But at least make sure it's not Josh and he's not in trouble first. I've always regretted the way I ended my sessions with Josh. I felt a bit responsible for... No, Diane, I know what you're going to say and don't. Okay, I'll unblock the number and see what I can find out. Good luck. And let me know how it goes. I will. Speak soon. Take care, Diane.
Hello? Josh? Diane? Is that you? If it's you, Josh, you know you can talk to me. Everyone is worried about you. Josh Vandercourt is dead. Excuse me? Don't you read the news? But they never found him. Josh is missing. He may be alive. I know for a fact that Josh is dead. And I know who killed him. How do you know he's dead? Who are you? Why are you messaging me? Have I met you before? You've met me. But I doubt you'd remember who I am. You're so wrapped up in your own little world. You don't care about people, really. This therapy job is just a ruse. A lie. To cover up the truth that you're a selfish person who doesn't care about the people you treat. All you want is money. You're driven by greed. You're wrong. I care very deeply for all my clients. I'm not driven by money or greed. Well, that's lucky for you. Because after I'm finished with you, you'll either have no money or no job. It's up to you. What are you talking about? I know who killed Josh. And you do too. You're not making any sense. Diane, wake up. You killed Josh. I killed Josh? You're insane! Tell me who you are! I'm someone who never forgets someone's actions. I'm someone who likes to remind people that when they make a mistake, they must be held accountable. You have made a grave mistake, Diane. And what might that have been? I didn't kill Josh. I cared for Josh. As much as I possibly could, he was a deeply troubled young man. He was. But he was also kind and caring. He didn't deserve what happened to him. What happened to him exactly? If you know anything about Josh's whereabouts, you need to tell me. Or the police. Josh texted me before he disappeared. He told me not to come looking for him, but I knew what he was really trying to say. He told me that no one cared about him anymore. It broke my heart. He was abandoned by one of the only people that he felt that he could talk to. And that was you, Diane. He was abandoned by you. It wasn't my fault. I sustained an injury. I couldn't see any of my clients. It was unfair, I know, but it couldn't be helped. I didn't know this would end up happening to Josh. Except you did. I've lost you again. You keep accusing me of things I haven't done. I don't even know who you are. What gives you the right to think you know anything about me? Because I do know things about you, Diane. I know more than you think. I know what Josh wrote to you hundreds of times before he disappeared. He begged you to see him. You knew how much he was suffering, and yet you did nothing. You abandoned your duty of care in his time of need. Josh may have made some mistakes, but he didn't deserve the treatment he got from you. He did make mistakes. Unforgivable mistakes. So have you. And you're going to pay for them, like Josh did. You have a choice, Diane. Either give me the $500,000 in your bank account, your precious savings, or I am going to make it my personal mission to make sure everyone knows just what you're capable of. What do you mean? Your name is going to be everywhere on social media. The therapist who abandoned her client before he disappeared. You'll lose your business. You'll lose your livelihood. You'll lose your license. You'll lose everything. You'll be working in a Walmart before the end of the year. Mark my words. How do you know how much money I have in my bank account? I told you, I know more than you think. There's only one person who knows that, aside from myself, and that is my husband. Do you know my husband? Tell me. Think about my offer, Diane. Mull it over. You have 48 hours to send me your life savings. In cash. Or you can kiss goodbye to your job and your life. You're making a grave mistake. I won't be blackmailed. I'm going to find out who you are and you will be arrested. Bring the cash to 48 Trafalgar Street. In two days' time. Leave it next to the blue door, yellow building. You'll know the one when you see it. Don't be late. I'll be contacting a lawyer and the cops. Never contact me again. Good night. Jim? Sweetheart? I tried calling you. You're not answering your phone. I'm so sorry. I've been so busy all day at the conference. You know that weird text I received the other day? Yeah. What about it? Whoever it is, they're trying to blackmail me. 
They think I had something to do with my old client, Josh Vandercourt's disappearance. What? That's crazy. You were so upset when Josh went missing, you didn't have anything to do with that. What did this person say exactly? That if I don't give them my life savings in cash, they're going to expose me. They said they can get my license revoked. How? I don't know, Jim, but they feel pretty sure of themselves. Don't freak out. I'm going to phone my buddy at the sheriff's department. They'll be able to find out who this prankster is pretty quickly. Thanks, Jim. No problem, sweetheart. Relax. I'll sort this out. The game is up. My husband has friends in the police department. I've given them your number. They're going to track you down. They're going to find you and stop you. No, they won't, Diane. How can you be so sure? Because I know your husband. And he isn't going to do that to me. You know my husband? How? Diane. Yes? I'm going to tell you a little story. It's about a girl. This girl was young and naive. She dreamed of meeting the perfect guy and marrying him. And guess what? The girl's dream came true. She met the perfect guy. The guy loved the girl with all his heart. The problem was, this guy also had a problem. He loved something more than the girl. He loved to drink. Every day, from dawn till dusk. And then he lost his job, and everything went downhill. You're talking about Josh, aren't you? When the guy got drunk, the guy got violent and hit his wife. Except the next day when he woke up, he was so sorry. And he cried into his wife's arms. Why am I like this? He would say to the girl. The girl loved him so much that she would forgive him every time. And then one day, the guy hit his wife so hard that she had to go to the hospital. The girl promised herself this would be the last time. So she told the guy to get cleaned up and see a therapist, or she would leave him. So he did. That therapist was you, Diane. Josh was getting better, and then you abandoned him. Faced with the shame of everything he left, the girl, he disappeared. You're the girl, aren't you? I was the girl. I'm not anymore. I'm sorry this happened to you, but you have to believe me. I didn't want this to happen to Josh. It broke my heart when he disappeared. I wanted to help him. I really did. We can't go back in time. What's done is done. Of course we can't, but we can still change our futures. You don't have to continue down this road. I've done bad things too. Things I'm ashamed of. I'll own up to them if you will just own up to your mistake. You had a part in Josh's disappearance. You just don't want to admit it. Okay, I will own up. I have owned up. I'm sorry this happened to you. Good. Apology received. Now, I must apologize to you, Diane. For what? You know that picture I sent you? The one with all the lingerie? Yes. There was someone with me when that picture was taken. What are you talking about? You know who I'm talking about. No, I don't. You might want to talk to your husband about what he's been doing on his little business trips, Diane. No, he wouldn't. I have nothing to hide anymore. You can keep your precious money, your precious job. But just know that I have taken your husband as you have taken mine. I don't believe you. You're lying. Diane. Yes. I'm sorry. I mean that. Goodbye. The anonymous texter turned out to be none other than Josh's wife. It turns out my husband had a one-night stand with this woman, whose name is Lauren, while he was away on business. He says it was a drunken mistake, that he met her at a bar and she spiked his drink. I'm not sure who to believe. This whole ordeal has been unbelievable. I've taken Trisha's advice and taken some more time for myself to reflect. I don't know if I will leave Jim or not. My head tells me yes, but my heart tells me no. This was probably the same problem Lauren was facing when she had to deal with Josh's abuse. I really do hope Josh is alive somewhere and that he is okay. The world is a weird place. I'm just going to keep going, not think too much about the past, and try and help other people make their futures a more comforting place to be.